In this video, we're going to talk about whether or not you should get a heat pump or standard air conditioner for your home. And I will explain the difference between the two of them. And if you're just tuning into the channel for the first time, in another video where I talk about dual fuel systems, which is like the minotaur of the HVAC world, except instead of being half man, half beast, it's just half furnace, half heat pump, which essentially gives you the best of both worlds, especially in colder climates. So if you haven't checked that out already, make sure you stay tuned till the end because there'll be a link to that video popping up on the screen after this. So first off, heat pumps are actually not a new technology. They have been around for a while and there are several types. Now in this video, we're not going to talk about geothermal heat pumps because it's a little bit different concept, but essentially the same thing. The only difference is you have a ground loop that the heat pump is connected to. That is your source of heat transfer for the home. It's a very oversimplified explanation, but that's the TLDR long story short is that we're not going to talk about that in this video. We're just talking about standard air source heat pumps. Now, if you have an air conditioner at your house, the only difference between it and a heat pump is a reversing valve and a defrost control board. That is it. The reversing valve is what makes an AC able to function as a heat pump because it reverses the flow of refrigerant and therefore changes the direction of heat transfer. Now, there is one particular scenario where putting in a heat pump is extremely beneficial if you currently have a furnace, and that is anytime you are able to offset your operational cost 100% with solar panels. If you have solar panels on your roof, heat pumps are almost always a no-brainer. Now you want to make sure that you are putting in the right kind of heat pump, specifically a high efficiency inverter heat pump, because we have lots of customers who have solar panels and with their high efficiency inverter heat pump, they do not have a heating or cooling bill anymore. And while these past few years, their neighbors have been complaining about higher natural gas prices or high energy bills in the summer, they have been enjoying a $0 heating and cooling bill and regardless of whether or not you think solar panels are a bunch of greeny weeny, tree hugging, commie loving hoo ha, you can't argue with the fact that it's pretty cool to not have a heating and cooling bill other than the initial cost of the equipment. Now, what if you don't have solar panels? Does that mean you shouldn't get a heat pump? The short answer is not necessarily. And depending on what part of the country you are in, you might already have one, but you wanna make sure that the heat pump is going to be cheaper to operate than its natural gas furnace counterpart, which is why it's important to get a contractor in your area that knows what they are talking about to help you make that decision. Natural gas prices vary widely across the country. And so from a cost equation standpoint, it's best to consult with a local contractor or do the cost comparison yourself by looking at what it would cost to run a furnace versus a heat pump. For example, in Colorado, we have had a huge spike in natural gas prices recently that has made it very attractive to purchase a heat pump and cheaper to operate as well. Now, from a cooling standpoint, a heat pump is no different than an air conditioner. Like I mentioned earlier, the only difference between the two units is a reversing valve and a defrost control board. But besides that, they operate almost identically. The types of heat pumps we prefer to install are inverters because not only are they more efficient, but they are also a lot quieter because they ramp up and down on a continuum instead of turning on or off at 100% capacity like a traditional single stage system. Now, one downside to a heat pump when compared to a traditional air conditioner is that a heat pump is always going to cost a little more for the equipment because of the added components I mentioned earlier. This is normally not a huge price difference, but it is still something to consider. And an additional downside on that same note is that there are a few more moving parts to potentially fail. So repairs can be more expensive depending on what breaks. However, most equipment is under warranty for at least 10 years or more. So you will likely be replacing the equipment before a major component like a reversing valve or compressor goes bad. Things definitely break though, obviously. That's why we're in business is to fix them when they do. Now, if you are getting a heat pump and live in a climate that gets cold, which we will define as below freezing, then it's important that you get a heat pump that can work well in cold weather. And most of the lower ambient heat pumps we sell keep up as low as negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit and some even colder. For example, the video that will be popping up at the end references the Daikin Fit. And we talk about this AC a lot. And the heat pump version does a very good job of keeping up in temperatures down to about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's actually rated to four degrees Fahrenheit. So in moderate climates like Colorado or Utah, these pair very well with a backup 
backup furnace as a dual fuel option because you don't need a furnace or backup heat that often and the heat pump will keep up the majority of the time. Now, as you get into colder climates like Montana or Minnesota or the Dakotas, for example, it's definitely important to get something that's rated for low ambient temperatures because if you have weeks on end where temps are negative 20 Fahrenheit, then it will definitely be important to have a furnace or auxiliary electric heat kit for backup when the heat pump kicks on. Keep in mind, these are always directly integrated with the heat pump. So it's not like you have to go turn on the backup heat manually. Your heat pump is going to sense that the system is not keeping up and it automatically switches to backup heat mode. So hopefully you found this content helpful and let us know what you think in the comment section below. Do you still have questions that weren't answered? What type of HVAC are you considering for your home? I always love when people put their individual scenarios in the comment section and I always try to reply to them in a timely manner because sometimes people are looking for help with a specific scenario and oftentimes other commenters will chime in as well and it's a learning experience for me as well to get to see what other people are thinking about when it comes to choosing HVAC for their home. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver Metro or Colorado Springs, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free we come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's a link actually in the description below where you can schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service. So you can stay up to date when we start servicing your Metro. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now. So make sure you check those out if you haven't already, and we will catch you on the next episode.